2022, the year of hope. Hopefully, this year will be better than the last two years. 2020, probably the worst year of most people's lives. 2021 wasn't so great either. However, the one thing it was great for was Marvel. drinking my coffee but this year we actually have quite an exciting lineup for marvel projects there's been a whole load of marvel projects that have been announced uh, i'm not going to go through every single one that's been announced i'm just going to be going through the ones that are confirmed to be in 2022 obviously they could change due to covid but we've got six down right here so let's get into it starting at number six i'm going to say my least excited one in this list is guardians of the galaxy holiday special I love the Guardians of the Galaxy films. Um, I did a tier list. I haven't done it on my channel. I just I've just done a tier list and I tier list all the the Marvel films. I might have to do that on my channel. The first Guardians of the Galaxy S tier, the second Guardians of the Galaxy A tier. Like there's no dispute in there. They're just amazing films. So why is this at the bottom? Well, it's just a holiday special. I feel like it will be so funny. It'd be the first holiday special we've got. But it's just a special, right? It'll just be one episode um, on Disney Plus. I'm a, I'm a, I'm guessing so, or maybe like an hour's worth. I'm not sure how long it will be, but I just think everything on everything else on here might have more of a story to it. Speaking of Guardians Galaxy, do you like do you like my great Merc? Next up at number four, we have Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. This film is number five, just because the other things that are coming out this year are gonna be, I think, better. But this is this is a really hard one to talk about since the passing of Chadwick Boseman, because it's just I, the the fact that he was dealing with cancer and nobody knew it's just so upset and even some people on the on the set of like the avengers films said they they didn't even have a clue about any of it and i think it is going to be really hard if they are going to replace black panther um i know they're not they said they're not going to recast t'challa but i think the big rumors at the moment are that shuri will become black panther or um Oh, I can't remember his name, but the, he's an absolute unit, he's an absolute legend, or he might become Black Panther. We do also have, not on this list, but we do also have a, a Disney Plus show uh, coming out. I don't think the date has been confirmed, but that will be a show that dives into the, the history and culture of Wakanda, and that will be really, really good. Next up, at number four, I just realised... I called to Wakanda Forever number four, that was number five. But next up at number four, we have She-Hulk. Now, I'm somebody, when I was younger, I'm slowly get, getting into reading comics now. Like, I've got Secret Invasion here, Spider-Man one here. I have some Moonlight ones down there. As a kid, I never really read a load of comics. But the only ones I did read, I actually read some, like, old-school Avenger ones. And I actually read some She-Hulk comics. They were, I, I don't know why I did. It was, I think they were just the ones that were, like there so i just read them uh so i'm actually really excited for she hawk because i actually know a bit about the character which is really exciting she hawk's a very interesting character because she's a bit like deadpool in the sense that she likes to break the fourth wall and i don't know if she will break the fourth wall in this but if she does it'd be very interesting because she'll be the first person in the mcu to break the fourth wall i think also the main topic of the discussion when it comes to she hawk is bruce banner's hulk because in the trailers you've seen He's in his Hulk form, and then he's in his human form, but it's not just Hulk form, it's Professor X form. So has Bruce found a way to toggle between the two? Does he start out as Professor Hulk, and then does he does he just get rid of Hulk entirely, or does he find a way that Hulk and Banner can live separately? Who knows? Next up, we have the one that's coming up most recent, and that is moon knight i cannot wait for moon knight i was someone who not entirely clued up on the character so i bought some comics you know i better prove it now i've got to prove it and those people are going to be like yeah sure you did paul boom have that what a character he is the fact that he just has different personalities uh split personality disorder is just such an interesting take and no character in the mcu so far has anything like that i also think this is the best opportunity we have to go dark in the MCU. I know we can have Ghost Rider Blade in the future. And I know this, well, I'm not sure if the age rating has been released, but it probably still will not be rated R. But 
it, it will be interesting to see what they rate it, and I'm just really excited for this. One. Next up, at number two, we have Thor, Love and Thunder. Now, this is a film I am very excited for. Um, I say very excited for what? It's not really got any hype at the moment. I know Chris Hemsworth has said he's not sure if he wants to return to Thor after this because he feels like there's no... There's no real hype around the character at the moment, but I, I, I feel like once the films come out or once like we're building to it, everyone will realize like, guys, we love Thor at the moment. Like Thor is the the guy in the MCU at the moment. When you really think about it, his first two films absolutely stank, and then Thor Ragnarok comes out and completely changed his character. Ta Ta Taika Waititi, well done, my guy. Like you have done such a good job there. Thor Ragnarok, he was brilliant. Infinity War, he was brilliant. Endgame, he was good. I know some people think, oh, he's taking him as a joke, making him fat, but realistically, what you're doing there is you're taking a character that's gone through a lot of depressing things and you're just putting reality on him. That's what would have happened. And not just that, we've seen in pictures of the set that Chris Hemsworth is looking wham. And not just like he's looking like wham, he's looking humongous so Thor is obviously going to go through some mental mental change in this film another thing I'm really excited about with this film is we're going to have the Guardians of the Galaxy in this film which is it's so great because the last one we saw Thor was with the Guardians of the Galaxy so it makes sense to see those two interlude and that will probably also lead into Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special we're also going to see Jane Foster become Thor in this so I wonder how that's going to work I feel like People think, oh, she'll become Thor, our Thor will just, you know, retire or die or something in this film. But I don't think that will be the case, because all she has to do be is to become Thor is Will Milnir, right? We, we, we've shown already that you can Will Milnir and still be Thor, Captain America and Thor being together is the example. So I think what will happen, because I think they're going through down the very depressing storyline, by the way, of when Jane Foster gets cancer. So I'm guessing Thor's going to take her to Asgard for some sort of medication or something and see if they can help in any way. And maybe she's going to stumble across Mjolnir and just pick it up. I have no idea how they're going to do it. She has an affinity stone inside her, though, so I guess they could play that into effect somehow. Next up at number one. I think it's an obvious one, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. I think this film, do I think it's overhyped? Absolutely not. I think this film is going to be incredible and do I think all the rumoured cameos are going to happen? I actually did a video on which cameos I think will appear but I'll give you a quick sum up. Tom Cruise, stuff like that, it ain't happening but Chris Evans, Human Torch, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, Professor X, Patrick Stewart, Fassbender, Magneto, maybe. Mm, you never know. Never know. But just not the cameos that I'm excited for in this film. When you really think about it, at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home, we've seen Doctor Strange in quite a, a strange place. He's not the Sorcerer Supreme anymore. So we're going to have to see him retake that claim. But how is he going to do that with Wong there? Will Wong die? I really don't want Wong to die because at the moment Wong seems to be the guy who's just chilling in the MCU, hopping between Shang-Chi and Spider-Man and now Doctor Strange. Also we get to see Wanda Maximoff in this and she's a character who is so sick. I know she's got a lot of very strange stands and sorry Wanda stands if you're here but uh, chill, 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 chill a bit alright? She's, she's a good character. She, she ain't that good. Yeah I can't wait to see Wanda, her mind bending through the multiverse. Does she find Billy and Tommy? Let's find out. And that's where I'm going to leave this video for today. Um, I've been trying to, like I said in a few other videos, been trying to pump out Marvel and Star Wars content for you guys. Uh, so I hope you've been enjoying. If you want to see more Marvel content from me, there will be a playlist right here. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please like, subscribe, see you in a bit.